Appraisal gap? What is that? Escalation clause, up to what price? What the heck is PMI? Private mortgage insurance and what's an HOA or homeowners association fee? And what does it cover? Being a buyer in today's real estate market is certainly not for the faint of heart. You've got to have emotional strength to get through and manage the stresses of the real estate transaction and get yourself to the closing table. In today's video, I'm going to offer tips and ideas of how to manage that stress and get you to your end result and goal of closing on that home that you love. So let's get to it. Hey, Laura Gallen here with Mountain Prairie Living Empowered by ERA Shields and welcome to my channel where I answer questions about the home buying and selling process and all the beautiful things there are here in Colorado Springs. And if that's what you're looking for, then I hope you subscribe to the channel. But let's get into today's tips, ideas and suggestions for managing the stress and keeping the emotions in check when you're out there in the home buying process in today's real estate market. Tip number one, write down your non-negotiables. Make a list of the things that must be in that home to meet the parameters and needs of yourself, your family, whoever else is involved in the transaction. Stick to those. Use that as a guide to say, well, no, nope, that house doesn't meet some of the, these non-negotiables, so we won't even go see it. That's going to help lower the stress. You're only going to be looking at homes that meet those non-negotiables. Tip number two, it's never never too early to talk with a lender or talk with a real estate professional who can connect you to a local lender. That process can begin a year ahead, six months ahead, but the objective here is to really help sort out some of the financial situations, make sure you're pre-approved, make sure you understand how to prepare for being pre-approved, maybe you've got some credit dings that you can clean up to get ready to be able to make an offer as soon as possible. Now you need to work with a real estate professional in this strong seller's market. Your real estate professional should be discussing with you the variety of strategies that could be used in a multiple offer situation because it's really likely that you're going to be in a multiple offer situation. They should be sitting down with you doing a buyer consultation, describing the market. If you're a seller, they should be sitting down with you and doing a seller consultation to discuss the actual market and what to expect and look at the numbers. The real estate professional should be setting you up with a uh, automatic search so you get a feel for the market, what your price point can afford, what those properties look like, how fast they're moving on the market, how much they're selling above asking price because in today's current market, most properties are going above asking price. But you also want to make sure that you discuss with that real estate professional that list of non-negotiables and listen that they're being respectful. They're not blowing you off. You wanna make sure that they are there to serve your best interest, whether you're the buyer or the seller. The next tip is you need to start educating yourself on the real estate market that you're in, whether you're buying or selling. You need to know the numbers. You need to know what's coming on the market, how many properties are on the market, how fast are they selling, what are the days on market, what's the average and the median home price. Um, maybe it's a townhouse. What are the price points for that townhouse? What competing new construction do you have against you if you're in an area near a lot of new construction? You need to know your real estate market and that's where your real estate professional will really help you. In today's multiple offer situations, you need to know the strategies that are available to you to help your offer rise to the top. You need to sit down with your real estate professional and talk about your financial resources, what options you might have or might be able to utilize that work within your financial resources for you. And that discussion might also have to bleed over to your lender. So for instance, you might have a 20% down payment that you're planning on using, but in today's market, getting a of an offer accepted, you might need appraisal gap money, which means that maybe some of the cash from that down payment needs to shift. And maybe you look at a loan program that's 10% down and that extra 10% cash goes towards an appraisal gap that may or may not be needed, but may need to be offered in an offer during a multiple offer situation. So learn about the strategies, appraisal gap, escalation clause, um, 
the post occupancy agreement. What does it mean to you as well as your loan program? Those are topics that your real estate professional can discuss with you and you need to know, your lender needs to know so that you are on the same page and ready to make an offer that's going to get to the closing table. One way to really lower your stress is to make sure you have pre-approval and that's not the same as pre-qualification. In fact, I've done a video on that and you can check that out next. But pre-approval technically means that you've already uploaded all of your financial information, tax returns, W-2s, bank statements, and they've actually pre-underwritten you, meaning that they, there might be a few other items here and there that you might need to bring to the table before closing, but overall, you feel confident that you are approved for that price point. So making an offer with a pre-approval in today's market is what is necessary. So go through that process, prepare for it. It lowers the stress during the transaction. Shop within the price point that you are comfortable with. Your pre-approval might be higher than you're comfortable paying per month. Now this is where you've done some of the legwork of budgeting out. You might be pre-approved for a certain amount, but that payment, including taxes, insurance, homeowners association, pr um, private mortgage insurance, those added fees might make that payment really uncomfortable for you in your budget. So that means that maybe you're gonna shop a little below that budget so that you can maintain a payment that works within the budget that you've created for yourself or your family. Now there's another point on here. You want to make sure in today's market, since offering over asking is probably likely. So if you were pre-approved for 400 and you're comfortable with that payment, that's where you want to stick, then you would be shopping at about $350,000 to have some leeway for that appraisal gap and making sure that you, you max out at the payment amount that's comfortable for you. Get ready to be creative with your offers. Now you may have to use some of the strategies I described before, but you can think outside the box. Maybe that homeowner that you're buying the house from has dogs. And so your offer might suggest that when they move to their new home, if it's local, that you're gonna pay for a poop picker upper service for the first six months in their home. That's an added bonus to them and really makes your offer look different and differentiate. I offer a lot of other suggestions in a video I did here on things that you can do to make your offers stand out, thinking outside the box. So get creative with your offers in today's market to lower the stress and increase your chance of rising to the top of multiple offers. This one is after you get under contract. Lock your interest rate. If you're worried about what that payment's gonna be, lock the interest rate as soon as you go under contract. Now, breaking that lock might cost you money if the interest rate goes down, so discuss those, those topics with your lender. But if you felt more confident and you were comfortable with the payment that you've discussed with your lender for that price point, then lock the interest rate as soon as you go under contract. You're gonna need to be patient in this market. You might write multiple offers. On average, from five to maybe 12 offers written on five to 12 different homes before you actually get under contract. So patience, just take a breath. You need to be flexible and you need to be ready to move fast. So it's critical that you have an automatic search on your um, email so that the you and the realtor are getting that that property that pops up really fast and you get in that house and you can make that offer as quick as possible. But the only way to make a quick offer is all that preparation that I just went through before. If you found value in this information, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel where I offer information about the home buying and selling process and this beautiful place I live in, Colorado Springs. I appreciate your support. Now, if you'd like to know more information about appraisal gap strategies, escalation clauses and, and that, then check out this video next. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.